Just for something. All right, guys, let's move on to our next speaker. So I think he needs no introduction, but then still let me try and dare to do that. Uh, I personally feel he's a living embodiment of pure genius. He has been an inspiration for most of us, if not all of us, if I can dare say that. But then he's been one who has actually enabled us to dare to dream. He's, he's one who's you know ensured that we strive to tread the untrodden path. He's a motivation to fight against all the odds. He's an engineer and innovator at heart who has dedicated a good part of his life to bring reforms in education in India. He has 400, and may I repeat myself, 400 patents under his belt. He is the founding director of Students in Educational and Cultural Movements of Ladakh, where the main objective is to ensure that the education system of Ladakh is better than how it was when they started this entire initiative. In fact, uh, you would even hear that their campus is famous for being one that is run on solar energy rather than you know, uh, fossil fuels. He's the one who invented the technique of ice tupa, which is basically creating artificial glaciers, which is used to store water in the winters in the form of a conical shape ice heap, which can then be leveraged in summer for crops when the water is scarce. He's the person who has been instrumental in the launch of Operation New Hope since 1994. It's an education reform initiative, which is aimed at overhauling the entire primary education in the government schools in Ladakh. Please join me in welcoming none other than Sonam Wangchuk. Hello. Thank you, Sonam. Can you hear me? Please let me know if you can hear me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone at Scrum and Jule as we greet in Ladakh. Our warm greetings from this cold mountains uh, to all of you in different cities, I suppose. I'm happy to connect to you and uh, I'll share a bit of my journey about uh, innovation and problem solving in high Himalayas. Are you able to hear me fine and see me fine? Because there are some challenges. And as said earlier, challenges are a part of life here. Can you hear me for the moment? Loud and clear. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes. Uh, <clears throat> um, I will start a little bit about my childhood. So, I grew up in a very tiny remote village as it is Ladakh is quite remote in that it stays cut off from rest of the world for six months of the year. It's only last month that a movement has started and by November, December, it will close once again. So that is how remote it is. five households where I and because it was so small a village we didn't have schools and I didn't go to any schools till nine years of age now many people would say that's so sad no schools to go but I think especially to go because I always Schools are better than bad schools. And uh, I see more and more what schools do to children. Uh, they become an impediment in the learning process. You know, learning is a... Is a young ones. You really don't necessarily... Schools and classrooms and teachers. What is most important for learning, I'll share with you from my own life's experience, not from any uh, books or articles, uh, is what I'll share with you. To learn is this software that comes preloaded with the hardware, hardware being human baby. When it comes to the world as the hardware, 
it comes preloaded with the software for learning also. And that software I have always believed is curiosity. Curiosity is what makes us learn. School or no school, teacher or no teacher, if we are curious or if we maintain the curiosity that comes naturally as a gift, then we are always great learners. Then we are learning lifelong. Even at 80, you're like an 18 year old if your curiosity is intact. And if your curiosity is somehow killed or dead, then you are 80 at the age of 18. So it's more curiosity, I feel. The first pillar of a problem solver or innovator is to learn and that learning happens when you have this great software called curiosity. While it comes naturally preloaded, most of our parents, especially our schools, are busy breaking that very spirit. And then we struggle to make the child want to learn when he or she has lost the, the quest to learn or in other words, curiosity. So from my childhood, I feel that um, it was curiosity that helped me learn and learn from everything, from the mountains, from the rivers and climbing trees and jumping into the Indus, animals, farms, people, and later tourism. When Ladakh had tourists, I started digging into their experiences and I would call them you know, walking atlases that come to my doorstep from different parts of the world. And I would extract everything about their countries, their geographies, their language. Languages except my mother tongue till nine years of age, I ended up speaking some nine or 10 languages uh, thanks to this software called Curiosity. So I always say, please keep your curiosity alive and you'll be or innovators, curiosity alone, because even monkeys are curious. Hmm? Curiosity killed the cat, as they say. So uh, curiosity can just make you like monkeys uh, and not much more if you don't have the second biggest quality in my view, in my is empathy. Empathy is that it, that makes you uh, feel others' pains, others' problems. And empathy is as important in business as it is in, you know, charity. Uh, not just that it is something saintly. In business, as you need even more empathy who come up with the best of innovations are people who can feel for the pains of the users, the end users, and solve everything to the last details so that users then fall in love with the experience and become life. So innovations that are empathy last for generations, whereas businesses that use quick fix solutions and um, do not really solve a real problem that people face, you know, or create the problems that they want to solve. They may make some quick buck, but then they fizzle out very soon. So I believe is that, that, that curiosity followed by empathy makes a great combination to solve problems. But, and there's a big but, that empathy, it stops at empathy. It's like prayers, you know, may the world have no problems and have all happiness and uh, not much will change. And therefore the third pillar of a problem solver's path um, that I have experienced is initiative, spirit of initiative. If you have the spirit of initiative, then what you learned with your quest and curiosity and what you felt with your empathy, you'll put into action. You will not sit hands on hand 
you will take action, go out and solve. And half the actions you take may go wrong, may not succeed, but each action leaves you with rich experience. And that's what then leads to a path of success. So spirit of initiative, I've always fe felt is very important if it has to culminate in solutions that really reach people. These three pillars, uh, uh, I feel, are, ho can hold a problem solver afloat all the time. So to go into more uh, of some examples of how I tread the path of uh, this uh, problem solving, I'll share some screens or images with you. And as they say, images speak more than thousand words. And and then in the case of Ladakh, where, uh, you know, it's such a different world that images definitely speak uh, much more. And let me know if uh, this sticks. Uh, sharing um, is, let me know if the screen has started. Do you see the screen? Yes, yeah, so we can now. Okay, so first of all, where am I? Up north of our country, attitude top, but also in altitude. We are at a height of some 11,000 to 14,000 feet uh, that we live, and um, it could get as close to outer space as possible. So. Uh, as I say, uh, as you get into the Himalayan rain shadow, which means that while Himalayas are lush green, uh, Ladakh is high and dry. That's what um, nature left us. Yeah? So you'll see here how high. Starts uh, showing you the high and dry. Uh, hey, Sonam. So, so this is Ladakh. Mm -hmm. um, so we're having some trouble hearing you. I think it could oh. be the bandwidth. So maybe if you can just switch off the video, I think I'm hoping everything is going to go smooth. But then my images will also stop, right? Uh, not really. You're screen sharing, right? It shouldn't stop. Are you sure? If I stop my video, then screen share should stop, no? No. Nope. Okay. Let's see if that is true. We really want to hear you out all through. Okay. So what you can see my screen though, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So you got rid of the unnecessary part. <laughs> so, it is Ladakh up um, in the sky, close to outer space, as I said. And if you look carefully, you know, temperatures are like outer space, swings between plus 35 and minus 35. They say people could get sunburn in the sun and uh, frostbite in the shade. So that's how uh, things are here. And looking at this, anybody approaching by air would think life wasn't even possible here. It looks like another planet. Uh, you, you, we are we are looking at some other planet like Venus or Mars, right? Um, well, uh, this, this image though is actually of the Mars, and I just put it here to tease you to 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 know what um, um, Ladakh is like. Very close to this, just a little different, as you can see here. This is uh, planet Earth, uh, Ladakh. What makes it different from the previous picture actually is this green oasis you see there down in the valley, which is uh, a Ladakhi village. And this is all human contribution where human uh, added and enriched nature. So even though we have hardly any rains from the skies, we are in glaciers and glaciers are like 
water from thousands of years ago. So they carved canals in the middle of mountains, rock faces to channel water and grow various crops. And that's what you see there. This is human... There's nothing to deforest. Um, it can be quite cold, yes, and uh, things are very different and we are a minority as often said, but we are more than a cultural ethnic minority. Because uh, nothing that works in New Delhi works here in these cold mountains. You can see how, what a circus it is to run a tap. Some of these technologies don't even work in New Delhi half the time, so less chances they'll work here. Uh, people have not only, but a colorful civilization has thrived with its own language, literature, music, dance, festivals, and a life uh, in harmony with nature. Okay, so I was uh, sharing with you earlier what my schooling was like. I'll just quickly, there are some slides, so why not? Uh, my schooling was curiosity. My schooling was empathy that I learned from my mother. My schooling was sense spirit of initiative that I learned from my father who would, you know, not sit still um, and change things, whether it is a doorknob broken or an unfair system in society, he would go out and take action. So this is what I think uh, uh, it, it takes to become problem solvers. And once you have spirit of initiative, a whole cycle of uh, beautiful uh, cycle starts. And somebody who has spirit of initiative takes action, action upon action, wrong or right. And these actions, wrong or right, leave us with a lot of experience and experience of seeing what works, what doesn't work, gives us a lot of confidence. People ask me, how do I become more confident? Doesn't happen one fine morning. I think you have to have a lot of experience and to have a lot of experience, you have to have taken a lot of action. And to do that, you have to have a spirit of initiative. And if you have that, then confidence comes naturally and slowly. And then if you have confidence, then success is a byproduct. You know, with experience and confidence, success is a byproduct. And as they say, nothing succeeds like success. So once successful, you would want to take to more experience and so on. So this was my schooling in Ladakh, this uh, place uh, as a child in a very different world uh, than most parts of the world. But uh, I learned as I grew up that this place had also a lot of problems. Ninety-five percent of the students were hardly five passing in tenth grade every year. There were schools with zero percent results, and this was not because the students were stupid, but because the system was failing in the mountains of Ladakh, where. Same language as may be used in day and nobody spoke it and uh, it was a disaster. For example, I always say in minus 30 classroom where children are shivering, they would be made to memorize F for fan, F for fan. You can imagine. Uh, in that cold classroom. The teacher, what is this fan? The teacher would say, oh, well, I have not seen one, but I'm told it keeps you cool. And the children would get even more <laughs> confused and ask who needs to be.
pause in this place. I'm lucky that problems in my engineering years because of which I had to earn my own expenses. And for that, I started teaching children. And when I taught children, I could see their problems and I developed my empathy to, to decide that I won't take an engineering job rather solve this problem. So when my friends were going to Silicon Valley after engineering, I decided to go back to Ladakh and change this system. And that was part of my education, as I told you. So in Ladakh, we started, I started uh, connecting with like-minded people and made a, an entire ants army to change the system. And ants, as you know, are helpless, you know, weak, but when they get together working, they can change a lot. These were these teenagers who had failed en masse, 95% were failing. So these teenagers who were feeling down and depressed became this ants army and they would go and go to villages and mobilize the people around the importance of education. When people got mobilized, then politicians suddenly start speaking about education because in a democracy, politicians follow people rather than lead, I believe. So when people's priorities change towards education, government's policies started changing and then teachers were trained um, in better ways, textbooks were changed from F for fan to better things that made sense in the mountains. And very soon, the results started changing. And as you can see, while the results were 5% for most years, slowly it started increasing and went up to 75%. At this point, we said that even the 25% who are failing are not really failures because it could be because we don't teach, you know, when they don't learn the way we teach. So we said we need a different kind of school for these special. Hands-on. It cannot be textbook. Uh, true learning happens hands-on, experientially, rather than, you know, classrooms and textbooks. So... To, to experience and apply what is in the textbooks in real world applications, we went to a not a blade of grass or drop. Then together with the students, we conceived and designed a school and then built the school with the students and then finally run the school with or by the students. So the students made various workshops. The school should be in a place like Ladakh. Minus 20, but it is very sunny. So where is the sun in the winter? That's where we should face our buildings to receive maximum sun. Where does the wind blow? West to east. So we should plant trees there to break the winds. So painting uh, in the next five students together with the, the uh, grown-ups built this school. And this school was a very special school in that the admission criteria in this school is not your marks and distinctions, but rather that you have failed in the system. So if you failed, you have high chances of being admitted. Otherwise, you could be on the waiting list. And in this school, the students run the show. Uh, our idea was to make teenagers take responsibility. They need responsibility to become responsible. If we treat them like little minions or problems to be solved, then they become irresponsible and a pain for people. That's why the teenager rage, rebellion, you know, when ha they have nothing uh, to do, despite having so much energy and ability, then they become, they decide to become problems and at least get some attention. So at this school, the students run the system. They run it like a little country with a little government, a little parliament, and each government lasts two months. 
uh, in which they elect their leaders and their ministers and so on, who take various portfolios, which are actually very serious. So here you see them setting their goals for the next two months after the election and they execute it. And then at the end in the next parliament, they present their work. Uh, the students take serious real life responsibilities. Some of them take care of the cows for the milk supply of this campus. Others take care of the solar cookers, the gardens with organic vegetables, the solar power plant, the greenhouses, and Apply mathematics, uh, precisely statistics, to track the productivity of the cows, and they would make histograms and pie charts. You learned in textbooks to real life. In school, uh, we use the energy that is abundantly available uh, around us, which is the sun. So whether it is cooking or greenhouses to grow vegetables or lighting photovoltaics for electricity, water heat. campus live in solar heated. Um, more complex ideas like microbial theory, germ theory are taught by applying it to say uh, making fruit preservation, which makes uh, shelf life of a unforgettable. So later fall in love with some of these experiences and they make a livelihood of that. And therefore there are various startups who make fruit pulp and fruit juices and supply it to the country. Um, others, you know, become travel companies. Yak cheese. They meet the you know, avocation and vocation at this place and find their livelihoods. Now, some stars that uh, in Ladakhi youth, you know, they, uh, these are considered as um, stars to follow. Uh, one of them is Rigzin. Rigzin became the minister for education when he was 27 in the Ladakh council. And uh, another star would be Stanzin who has been winning awards across continents for his documentary films. And then yet another, Tinless, who has become an icon for young women uh, as an entrepreneur. She recently got the Nari Shakti Award from the president of India. Now, can you guess what is common among them? Well, some would say maybe they had a uh, great education start, you know, or an elite families that they belong to. But actually, what is common among them is that they were failures in their education and repeated failures. Like Rigzin was a five time 10th grade failure. And therefore, he got a red carpet at our school of failures, of course. <laughs> so, the common thing among them is they had they have been students at this school which accepts those who have failed and then takes them beyond failure into leadership i I'll, um, towards the end i'll just share a little bit of how we apply what is in the textbooks into real life for example in your ninth grade you have heat the chapter on heat so we weave it with innovation to make life easier here. And in the chapter of heat, we all memorize conduction, convection, radiation, um, which bother us at the exam time and not much more later. Uh, so here they see in these buildings that you see, they come alive. These buildings have a transparent greenhouse that comes down in winter. And inside this greenhouse, as you see below here, the air gets heated by the sunlight, which comes windows. And then because 
and then it loses its seat to the fat earthen walls and becomes itself cool and dense and heavy and is pushed into the greenhouse again to be heated again and the cycle continues all day without machines moving parts power just an example of how convection can and with conduction and radiation this solar heated building stays warm at night this building i'm showing here has temperatures in ladakhi winters which are polar like for the last 25 years outside is minus 20 it is plus 18 comfortably without uh, pollution or expenses and the beauty is that when you apply design principles um, beautifully the warmest in winter likewise we apply simple school level science to various problems around us so when it came to water water shortage in the mountains as our glaciers are melting away five years ago together with my students we applied some other simple principles to make artificial glaciers or ice stupas what we call i won't go into detail because there is a lot on internet on this and we don't have much time but just to say that while in the mountains of Ladakh, we don't have a lot of money or electric power or machines. Uh, we don't mourn about what we don't have, the resources we don't have. What we do have, we celebrate, and that is gravity. Gravity is amazing resource, um, just like conduction and convection could be. So mountains have an upstream and a downstream all we do is in a stream like you're seeing upstream we put a pipe just a simple pipe no moving parts pumps etc and middle school science says that water always maintains its level so water in the pipe wants to go to the level of the inlet at the outlet so it it has pressure to go out and if you put a fountain there the water sprays into the air cold minus 20 air and freezes in the shape of a cone as you can see here now cone is a geometric shape you would have studied in class ninth maybe geometric shapes like spheres have minimum surface area for the volume so spheres means hemispheres would be more stable similarly cones like this would have low surface area for the sun to melt it and high volume for the farmers to use it. So if you make a large cone like this in winter, it lasts. The sun is unable to melt it till summer, till May and June, when it when farmers really need the water. So there is a whole movement and competitions of making these ice stupas in Ladakh. The one you see on left is the biggest, and we didn't make it. Some village made it and it's half the height of Kutub Minar, um, holds 70 lakh liters of water, which it slowly releases during the spring and summer when there is water shortage. So this is again a simple application of middle school science. This got us the Rolex award, uh, which is globally uh, well known, but, and the but is a big but, the big but is that we are not proud of such uh, recognition and awards because they don't really solve our problems. You know, we can be making ice stupas or solar heated buildings, but climate change cannot be fixed with that. Climate change is, is uh, sourced in big cities of the world like Bangalore, Beijing, Paris, you know, New Delhi, New York. So we cannot do much by just fixing the symptoms of it that we face as, you know, the first victims of climate change. So two years ago, we said, let's change the world. Yeah, have the audacity and try and change the world. So we said we are uh, at the forefront of climate change and maybe the world listens to us if we give a loud SOS cry. 
And that's when we started a movement called I Live Simply, which is uh, Gandhiji's message. And on 150th birth anniversary, we launched the I Live Simply movement to give the world a message that if they in the big cities live simply, then we in the mountains may Uh, lecture, we made it into a crowd which would be fun for young people. So if you go to ilistsimply.org, you will find that it is like a crowdfunding uh, platform where you don't actually pay money, but you pay with pledges to change your behavior. Difficult in the mountains and by the cold climate change starts. So here you can make pledges to go vegetarian, plant a tree, or, you know, change from cars to bicycles, aeroplanes to trains, and the site will equate it to an amount of dollars. Important than real dollars because it will have an impact if people around the world make pledges and keep their pledges. So I urge you all to also participate and do your part, share this uh, movement from our country to the world. And uh, that way, uh, make this planet a little happier, heal. And I would say this is not the end as the journey is much longer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, so much, Sonam. I think truly inspirational. Most of us are awestruck. I am definitely at loss of words. I, I think nobody can put in words the way you, the way your entire journey has been. I mean, we crib about every small problem that we have, be it in office, be it personally, but the way you have stood up to all the odds, it's, it's truly inspiring for all of us, highly motivating. Thank you so much. Thank you. I will open up the questions now, uh, Sonam. Okay. Um, uh, Guru, if you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, please. Yep. Hi, hi, Sonam. It's, it's uh, truly inspired us, you know, uh, while, you know, listening to you, we have watched you know, a lot of your videos, a lot of your initiatives that we have, you know, seeing through uh, and those are, you know, really changing the um, aspect of looking at it. Okay. Aspect of looking at the work we do, the work we follow, the, uh, 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 what we can say, the, the difficulties that you overcome. It's, it's really inspiring us. So my, my just question is, uh, currently, I think this, this moment is limited to uh, Ladakh region, right? So why are we not trying, you know, the changing this uh, or, or implementing this thing to national level? Have you got any such opportunity? Yes, yes uh, we have uh, appealed to all. It's in your hands uh, for the national level. No, uh, it's not exclusive to Ladakh, nor to national level. It is a global appeal because when it comes to global warming, it cannot be regional or Ladakhi initiatives. It has to be global initiatives. And that's where I would urge you to become partners and promote and the mountains of India reach everybody in the big cities where it all starts. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Question. Sandeep, if you want to unmute yourself, please. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Harshita, for giving me an opportunity. First of all, Sadar Pranam to Sonam Ji. Uh, truly honored to be a part of audience. Uh, I mean, this was the highlight uh, for today, for sure. So, Sonam Ji, my question to you is, uh, it, it, you know, you have truly proved and, and it's, it's seen that necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, you know, we who are in, living in metro cities, to us, what would you suggest? I mean, perhaps everyone has not failed. Perhaps everyone has not faced those hardships. What is your message to us who are working for different global mm -hmm. corporate companies? What is it that we should be practicing to mm -hmm. make India and the and the whole planet a better place? What's your suggestion? What's your message to us? Sorry. As I said, please live simply so we may simply live. 
So just at our um, in sync the planet can take. And if enough people in India uh, become mature and wise, it might inspire the rest of the world also. I think uh, be, modern might be to acquire, possess all the amenities and facilities. will go into this is which will perhaps be the ultimate sophistication so please take steps towards that thank you so much sir truly honored thank you sandeep for your question payal if you could unmute yourself please yep. hi so first of all i am honored to be a participant here and i would say i'm i will be going back as a delightful part delightful participant from this session today. So thanks a lot. Uh, so my question uh, is like your journey is truly, you know, uh, I would say transpiring. So how do you quench your thirst for knowledge? Hmm. There is no <laughs> fixed way. I mean, uh, anybody uh, I meet, I try and take advantage of all that the person has gone through the experiences they have lived. Each one is a textbook, you know, or a, 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 a whole encyclopedia. So most of my knowledge comes from meeting people and talking to them. And then, of course, some books. I'm not a great reader, but I read what I need. And uh, nowadays from, yes, new media, digital media, video world, it's a beautiful world. It couldn't have been better where, where people can leave their experiences in digital form on these platforms uh, and they outlast uh, their own lives. So for learners and for curious people, um, this is the best time uh, compared to how it was to, you know, own an Encyclopedia Britannica or go to a library. Now everything is at the tip of our fingers. And yet I'm surprised we, not many of us make use of them um, as much as we could do. So that's how. Okay. Thank you, Bio. Any and, more questions anybody has? And just to add into it, I think what uh, Sonam was saying, I think uh, that's what I heard, or maybe I got to know from him only, that uh, it uh, living simply may, may be as simple as maybe not even uh, uh, ironing your clothes. That also helps in, in the environment. <laughs> yes. So that, that, that also. Yeah, 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 Webhav, you want to say something? Awesome. Webhav Patki, you may want to unmute yourself. Couldn't hear. Okay, maybe we'll give Shilpi a chance then. Yep. Hi, uh, thanks a lot for the wonderful session and uh, the insights that you have send, uh, shared with us. Uh, my whole family was there <laughs> listening. I couldn't stop myself uh, not to drag my husband and my daughter. Please listen. This is like uh, golden words <laughs> for us. So thanks a lot. Uh, my question is uh, um, that uh, like... Uh, uh, I would definitely like follow the the movement. Uh, thanks for sharing that uh, movement information with us. But also uh, towards the practical schooling that you shared, uh, that that's uh, that's that's simply brilliant. But unfortunately, we um, uh, at least I am not aware of uh, such practical schooling concepts in. Um, into the different, uh, into the normal states uh, where uh, the traditional schooling is uh, possible to be provided. So uh, are you uh, aware of any uh, initiatives that are being run in, uh, in, the, uh, in the other states and uh, that, uh, or any collaboration where uh, uh, you can share your uh, experiences and your insights so, such such concepts can be developed in other states as well. 
sorry sorry i got cut off for a while uh, so it was your question about whether there are other schools and uh, if we collaborate right yes. something like that i only got the end of that um there are some schools but there needs to be more uh, radical more out of box and uh, we try when possible to connect but we hope that more and more passionate people in their own places start initiatives and um, while it is not for us to go there and replicate or duplicate ourselves we believe we could link up and share our experiences our failures our successes mm -hmm. and to that end we have started an um, alternative university here where we hope to have modules where such people from different places could come and share and learn from one another and we could also facilitate um, such initiative uh, why, uh, without ha them having to face all the challenges we might have faced so that's an Oh. Yes. Yes, that sounds great. Thanks, Shilpi, for your question. All right, so we're going to let you go. I know we are on the top of the hour. Thank you Thank so you. much for sparing time. And I know you have traveled so far just to be with us. We cannot be more grateful. Thank you so much. That's good. And just to let everyone know, for uh, the, Sonam was talking about the remote part of Ladakh. For just for this talk, he has to travel maybe seven kilometers. Sonam, right? Yes. For, for seven kilometers just for giving this talk. So, th thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to you for it. So there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> we again connection issue. All the very best. Yeah. All the very best. <laughs> Oh, we, by the way, we missed you. I, I, we didn't hear you. I think. Oh, I just to... say, I just said, uh, make up for all these efforts by taking some pledges to change the world we live in. Sure, 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 Definitely. surely, sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. says your grandmother will be in the steps, and you'll have bumps and bruises all over your face. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye.